Hi, how are you? Doc Holliday. And welcome to the fifth quarter of the Memphis Showboat Show with head coach Todd Haley. I am joined once again, like everyone. Now, I am blessed with the presence to have Memphis Showboat's head coach Todd Haley back with us in the Action News 5 studios. Coach, what's up, man? How are we doing? I, 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 you doing pretty well, man, because for the second straight week, coach, y'all got a dub. You go down to Birmingham, take on the previously undefeated New Orleans Breakers. Y'all win the game 17 to 10, coach. You look better when we win. Uh, you do too, man. <laughs> bigger smile, man. You know, no, just, I get surlier. You look better when we win. <laughs> because I'm, I'm happy, man. Real quickly, Coach, just, just talk about how it feels to get another win like that. Oh, it was huge. I mean, we, we know we have very little margin of error. We knew we were playing a team that was undefeated, uh, best team in the league, and we knew we had to go out there and, 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 and go on the road again and, and figure out a way to do enough things to win. And we, and we did that. I was really proud of the team. Uh, a lot of guys contributed. I thought we played great complimentary football uh, in all three phases. And uh, it, was a, it was a fun scene in the locker room. I mean, guys were excited. The bus ride home was a lot more enjoyable than it was the last time. And right now, the fifth quarter reporter, Matt Enfield, is going to show us why that bus ride back to the big Memphis was enjoyable. A trip to Birmingham on tap. Showboat's looking to knock off the only undefeated team left in the USFL, the New Orleans Breakers. The defense balled out once again. Late second quarter, McLeod Bethel Thompson back to pass. The former USF Bull, Greg Reeves, comes flying around the edge for the strip, and Reeves going to recover the rock too. Showboat's forced the turnover, and it became a takeaway fest from there. Memphis threw an interception. But just four plays later, Bethel Thompson strip sack again. This time, it's Jeremiah Veloga forcing the fumble, and it's Frank Heron who falls on it. Memphis takes over. They fumbled on the very next offensive play, but turnovers come in threes, apparently. Final minute of the half. This time, Bethel Thompson forced out of the pocket, tip drill, and picked off by Kyrie Woods. Nice return sets the showboats up near midfield with 37 seconds left in the half. This time, they cash in. Alex Kessman been money in the bank the last few weeks. Drills a 43-yarder as time expires in the first half. He was a perfect 3-for-3 three three on field goals. Showboats up 6-0 at the break. Fourth quarter, now trailing 10-9, but driving on a big third and five. Cole Kelly gets absolutely drilled, but stands in there and delivers the floater to J.J. Wilson for the big conversion. Showboats inside the five. That led to this. On second and goal, Kelly stumbles but keeps his cool, finds a wide open John Mitchell in the end zone for the four-yard tutty. Two-point conversion puts Memphis up 17-10. to Now they need a stop, and this defense playing with their hair on fire. Fourth and five, Jermaine Kelly, ball hawk for the pass breakup. Showboats take over, run out the clock from there. Second straight week, they pull off a road upset. They knock off previously perfect New Orleans 17-10. to Now, Coach, even though I watched the game and I saw it, man, it looks even better looking at it again, man. But just watching that ball game, the, playing the way you all play for the second straight week, the defense stepping up. But what I liked about the offense is specifically Cole Kelly, Coach, when New Orleans took the lead, they went down and got a field goal, went on a nice little drive, take a 10-9 lead. You know what y'all come back and do. You know what y'all, but you know what y'all did. Y'all you know, said, you know what, we're going to come with a nine, play 59-yard drive. We're going to get a touchy and a two-point converge. Yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do to win. Um, you know, you, there's going to be those situations, and, and we did it last week. Uh, you know, it was definitely something that we talked about, that when, when you're in that situation where, you, you know, the offense has to do their part of the job to get the win, uh, you know, we've done it two weeks in a row. I mean, there were, uh, we, were, we were frustrated with the offense a little in the first half. We don't want to settle for field goals and things like that. But, uh, you know, we stepped up at the right time, and Cole Kelly can't say enough about him. Um, you know, he's just got a great in-game demeanor. Uh, he's into the game. Uh, he's, he's tough. Uh, he made plays running. He got a couple sneaks for us. And then ultimately, you know, completed two balls there to, you know, get us a touchdown and a two-point play. And just talking about that, Coach, not only that key play, but also on defense, number 27. Now, you, you had a little conversation with him because he's wearing a number that's extremely special to you. Yeah, my, my father's name in the, uh, with the Pittsburgh uh, number in the, with the Pittsburgh Steelers was 27. Um, it's always a number I play in the lotto, whatever. 
Um, it, you know, it's just been my lucky number because it was connected to my, uh, my dad. But uh, so any team that I've been on, I, you know, I search out whoever's wearing 27. I got a little 27 tattoo on my hand here and I tell me better represent and, and I thought he's done a very good job representing here the last few weeks. And you've done a very good job representing this program as well because coach because it seems like you are finally they finally getting it together mentally. Of course we know you great coach got a great coaching staff so that that's never the problem. It's about them coming together <laughs> knowing what they have to do. Sometimes that can be the problem. <laughs> no I mean it, it's really just the entire you know it's why it's the greatest team sport there is because you can't just do it with good players or great players. You can't just do it with good coaches or great coaches. It takes everybody, uh, you know, and it takes all three phases. And, and that's the beauty of the game. Uh, that's something that, uh, you know, I embrace fully uh, is just that process, the process of going through this, uh, you know, especially you start out poorly. Yeah, you got a couple games you might have, could have won, but you're not. You're 0-3. Now, all of a sudden, you're in, in the basement, and, uh, and now we're climbing out. So it's time to climb. Time to climb. It is time to climb. That, 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 that has something that, you know, I, I love that saying, too, you were talking about it before we started recording, but time to climb. Talk about who's climbing. That Memphis Showboat's defense, first three weeks of the season, not horrible, but really not good. But these last two weeks, talk about getting it together. When the fifth quarter returns with Memphis Showboats head coach Todd Haley, we're going to talk about that defense and the progress they've made over the course of the last couple of weeks because defensive coordinator for the Showboats, Carnell Lake, Todd Haley thinks a lot of him. And you're going to see why his defenders think a lot of him too because you all going to think a lot of him when the fifth quarter comes back. Time out.